Hey guys, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at a trick-taking game with some really adorable Asian artwork, so you know Kitty loves it. And this game is called Hagakure. Hagakure, or Hagakure, I don't know how to say it, so I'm going to call it Hagakure, is a game for three to five players from Studio H. And this is a trick-taking game, which means, you know, players are going to be following suit, high card kind of wins, that type of deal, euchre, hard spades, that type of thing. But what you're doing in this is you're going to have villagers against some samurais, and you're trying to collect villagers and samurais? I don't know the theme, but you're trying to follow suit or use the samurai as a trump suit to get the trick to score points. But in this one, if you score zero points, you get negative. Or if you get zero tricks, you score negative two points, and that is bad. So that's enough talking about it. Let's go to the table. Check it out. All right, so here's a game of Hagakure, I think. I'm not exactly sure how you say it, but that's what we're going to say. All set up for three players. This is a trick-taking game. It's basically cards, these little chits, and a reference sheet. And that's it. So let's talk about what we're going to do when we're playing. So depending on the number of players, if you're playing with five players, you're gonna use all the cards, which you can see right here, and then it's gonna give you a breakdown. If you're playing with less, you're gonna take some cards out. It'll show you the cards that are in the deck, and it'll show you how many cards each person's gonna get, how many are gonna go into the Yomi, which I'll explain in a little bit. So in a three-player game, this is what we have. So the way this game works is, it's a trick-taking game. So if there's two suits, there's the villager suit, which is blue, and there's the samurai suit, which is red. There's also so, so some fools, which is basically a samurai that's equal to zero that has a special power. So that's effectively the gist. Someone leads a samurai, everyone else has to follow suit with a samurai if they have one. If someone leads a villager, you can play whatever you want. So that's, that's the main rule there. All right, so let's go ahead and start playing. So the first thing that happens on your turn is you're gonna look at, you're gonna decide if you wanna use a token. So there are five different tokens down here that you can use. So let's explain those real fast. So this one will let you switch your hand with the cards that are in the Yomi. Basically, these are cards that could be better than your hand. You don't know what's in there. There are ways to look, but that's another token. So you could take this hand, switch it with that. Those are your cards to play with. This one will let you look in the Yomi or another player's hand. This one, if you have four, or I think five, yeah. If you have five villagers in your, your tricks, at the end of the game, you get two extra points. This one, you're gonna get zero points for the round no matter what happens. That could be good because you can get negative points. And this one, you're gonna get double points. So if you have a really good hand and you think you're gonna get a bunch of points, you might wanna play that. So the first thing that happens is people are going to play some of these tokens. So this player will be first. I'm just gonna say, you know, I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna swap with the Yomi. So I'm gonna come over here and swap. So I put my cards there, take that, this is out of the game. Then we'll go to this player. Um, they're not gonna do anything. And this player, I, don't, I haven't looked at their hand, so I'm just gonna guess. They're gonna do plus two, or times two points. So well, hopefully that pans out for them. All right, then we're gonna play. So on your turn, you're gonna play a card. So this is my new hand that I got from the Yomi. So this is even worse than my last one because I have two fools. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm gonna play this 14. So now because I played a 14, a blue, people do not have to play blue, they can throw off. So this is the next player's hand. They can decide how they wanna play it. So they have a bunch of samurai and some blue. So they're gonna go ahead and do this one. Cause if you can take a trick with the 18, you get an extra point. Let's see what this player is going to do. They, they have a times two, so they want to make sure they can get as many points as possible. So they have a full, you know, I think they're going to take it. They want that extra point. So they're going to take that, and then this is their trick. Then they will get the lead. So they're going to lead the full, which is actually good for me, and they don't know. So then I'm going to play my card. So I will play this full. And then this player will play... I mean, I guess it doesn't matter because they're going to play a higher samurai. So the fool, the way it works, if you play one fool, it's considered a zero. If you play two fools, whoever plays the second fool gets the trick. 
So technically, I will get this trick because I played the second fool. So that is, or the last fool, I guess, because you can play, the, uh, there's three fools. So it's my turn. I'm going to go ahead and play this. This player will play, you know, they're going to go ahead and just throw that down. And then this player will play. So there's a 12, a 17, so they're going to play the low one. They'll play a 6. So 17 gets it. Their lead. They have a 21 and a 7. They're going to go ahead and play the 21. This player's turn. They'll throw their 10. And it's my turn. I'll play the fool. So 21 gets it. Then we just play our last card. So middle player, purple player gets it. All right, so then we're gonna figure out scores. So the way the scoring works is you get one point per trick. So this is me. I get one point because I have one trick. So then you would mark it on this sheet, the scoring card right here. You can kind of see a game that we played. It's a low scoring game. You just mark your points here. So I would get one. Uh, this player didn't play any tokens, so they're not gonna get anything to enhance, but they have one, two points. So they have two, I have one. Then this player is getting times two. So they have one, two tricks, but they also claim the 18, which gives them an extra point. So they have three times two, they get six points. So they're now in the lead. And this is how the game's gonna play over how many players nine rounds so in a three player game you're playing nine rounds you're going to do the same thing nine times but keep in mind you only have five tokens so you're going to have to determine when you want to use your token and when you don't so that's how you play hagakure let's go to the top see what you think about it all right well that was hagakure um i'm not going to show you the components everything you needed to see you saw on the table so cards and chits cool i like the art so i'll give the art a plus I think this box is adorable. Like that art in the box is adorable. Doesn't show any of the cool samurai art. Oh yeah, it does. There's some samurai art on the side there if you can see it. So you got that guy hanging out. So it's just cool Asian artwork, Japanese. So you know how I feel about Japanese. So this is a trick-taking game. It doesn't do anything that, you know, a trick-taking game doesn't already do, except when you play a villager, you don't have to follow suit. Normally, like when you're playing euchre or what, so on, you know, so on and so forth, someone leads a club and you have a club, you have to follow suit. But in this, if someone leads a samurai, yes, you have to follow suit. But if someone plays a villager, no holes barred, play whatever you want, which adds a little bit of thinkiness to the game because I may have the high villager, but I also have a really low samurai that I could take this with and I get an extra point if I can take it with the 18, which is the lowest samurai. So I may do that, why not? Or I may play an old fool. Or someone else may play an old fool and I have an old fool and I play it and I take the trick. There's some cool decision space there that I like. I also like before the round starts, you decide if you wanna use one of your little tokens. I forget what they're called. Um, let me look here. They have an, a, a name that I can never remember because you know how I am. Nabori. So you can use one of your Nabori tokens to determine if you wanna score double points, zero points. Um, if you think you're gonna get four villagers in your tricks, that type of thing. So just gonna add a little bit of flavor to make it a little, you know, make a little more decision space in the game. Another thing that I really enjoy is the Yomi pile, which basically means it's cards that aren't in the game. So you never are 100% certain what's in the game unless you look at that Yomi pile. And I like the fact that you can switch your hand with that pile. You may have a great hand, but you could bluff and take the Yomi and then no one's ever gonna know what's in the Yomi and they could think you got something really good. So I like that, it's cool. So this is a fun game, not groundbreaking, but again, I don't care about that, I just wanna have fun. So I'm gonna give this a BGM accepted seal. This is gonna get a seven out of 10 on BGG for me, which is a three and a half out of five. On an arbitrary rent scale, that means absolutely nothing. But we give it the games that we enjoy. So that's what I'm gonna do. So that was Hagakure from Studio H. I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics. And as always, keep gaming.